And we're back. A storm is brewing. I like to illuminate. Do you? But we're back. Welcome, everybody, back to Toilet Time. The wonderful place where you get to know about the illumination. Of what? Of every single thing that is available within this I A A I spectrum. Is that related to the eye of Ian? Eye of the tiger. <laughs> Actually, mm-hmm. the eye of Ian. Yeah, you know, that was a big flop. What was? That hurricane. Well, you can't spell Ian without the I. Yeah. Just like W spelled with a D. Yeah. And C is spelled with an S. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> Ow, I'm feeling good. Neener, 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 nee. Whip it. Whip it good. Doo, doo, doo. No, I jumped out that whip. Just like, uh, what's that called? Uh, Indiana Jones? I don't know, but I think I just yeeted. Indiana Jones. Indiana yeeter. Indy. Indy. He wasn't even Indian. Put it down. <laughs> do you like reflecting yes what do you reflect yeah <clears throat> so this saturday is international you can probably go anywhere in the world and get some coffee yeah i wouldn't mind some of those arabic beans actually so i guess we can go today and go get some coffee at starbucks for free amazing yeah. we should try it dunkin donuts whatever yeah if they still have coffee, they probably are. Yeah, maybe all, we'll film it and, and show the world. Mm, probably how it works. all used up, unfortunately. Uh, like SpongeBob. Yeah. Oh. That's cool. I so saw there's two things there's National Coffee Day, which is today. And then for the rest of the world that's celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month, they will be able to participate in that on September 1st. Now, will Starbucks not be biased and give the international community free coffee also? I don't know, but we'll find out on Saturday. You want to know some psychology tricks? There's you, four of them. Will you try it on me? Uh, well, I, I don't know if I can, but I mean, I could tell them and you, we can see it out. I mean, it's not like something like that. It's just four tricks. Of the trade. Of, yeah, of psychology. Okay, yeah, sure. Let's hear them. All right, so <clears throat> first, I think they're unrelated too. So first, washing your hands or showering can make people feel less guilty. I can see how that works. That's probably a very ancient practice. It probably has to do with germs. Yeah. You know, they say cleanliness is next to... Religious folk. I, I guess. Well, yeah, I remember uh, every time when I used to... When I had my PSP and I would go on dirty websites, I would take a shower and it made me feel better. Really? So, yeah, I can attest to this. That's strange. It's personal hygienics. Yeah. Ergonomics and all that. It just doesn't feel like... Well, peeing on yourself in the shower is supposed to eliminate foot fungus. Yeah, I've read that. But I don't know if that's really true or not, but I've read that. Who knows? Yeah, I think I read it from like Armstrong or something. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) He probably had a strong arm. Yeah. Honestly, I always try to pee on the wall. Like I try to spell my name and stuff, or like in the on the floor in the shower. Of course, you that bored? Uh, no, or is I'm it just more like gamifying to, showers? I don't know. I mean, it's basically like anything else. You know, you pee in a toilet, and you're usually aim for the stuff on the side of the bowl. Yeah, like gamifying. Like it, it makes it fun. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's the Game of Thrones. Um, do you want more? So I have there's three more psychology tricks. Um. So the second one is, if someone is crying, tell them, do you want some sand? Confusion improves mood. What if you just like, hey, no, somebody ain't do like that Michael Scott stuff. <laughs> 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 You're like yeah. he brings a lot of confusion. Yeah, he could. Yeah, like he really does. If anybody's perfected the art of confusion, 
I think it's that guy. <laughs> I think you're right. Yeah. I don't think it improves mm. people's mood, though. <laughs> <laughs> it improves mine. Yeah, us that as the legend. objective watcher. But I'm talking about, you know, if somebody's crying and you do Michael Scott, I don't know if that's going to improve the mood. Depends on how good of an impression you can do. You're pretty good. I try to be. I mean, I don't mean to brag or anything, but, you know. Do you think you can improve people's mood with scotty i don't know i've never tried it honestly i'm interested in trying this one next time i see someone crying i might ask them if they want some sand gonna rub them the wrong way no that'd be pretty gritty with sand yeah no that sounds like a what they, what they call that a, um that's why i say it's the wrong way sandy seagull or something like that yeah a sandy spongebob the squirrel no sand, that's sandy cheeks uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> No fun when in the sand in the buns. Yeah. But um I saw this one video of this one kid, a random stranger. He was probably some teenager. You can tell he's one of those smelly kids that never take a shower. And he went up to a girl that was crying on the porch. I mean it was like in public. She was crying, it was nighttime, under a street light, and he walked up to her and he said, Is everything okay? And she just said just, I want to be left alone. And he said, okay, well, I just want to make sure you're okay. And he was a complete stranger. And all of a sudden, she just, like, got up and left. But if he would have followed this, I think. She would have got, she would have called 911. No, I think she would have called him. Like, she would have gave him her number. They would have exchanged saliva. Is everything sand? Yes. Get muddy. Get dirty. <laughs> Dirt. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know. I mean, it's tools of the trade. Well, are you ready for the third one? Absolutely. <laughs> if you want people to take you seriously, tell them what you say is what your father taught you. Like your daddy done told you. <clears throat> so if I say my daddy said, that's supposed to make everybody approve of my statement. I think you have to use my father specifically. If you say daddy, then yeah, it sounds... Really just spoiled. So if I say, did you know that my father said X, Y, Z? And that sounds authoritative and correct. Yeah, like my father says that the moon landing was a hoax. And it was a big cover-up, a big debacle scheme. Who, who's writing this stuff? Is this like a 10-year-old? I don't know. Um, it's just... The plaque. I. I mean, it's. Uh, it's straight out. Uh, it's from. Uh, Investing ex executives. Yeah. So it's straight from. Uh, she jumping. Straight from T talk. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So number four, if you guys can stomach it, if someone is trying to make you decide on something in a hurry, they are probably giving you a bad deal. You know that that may have an ounce of truth in it. Well, you probably have to take it with some sand. Yeah, because and that, that's relatable. If people are always in a hurry, they don't want to spend the time to be questioned, analyzed. Because, you know, the more you look at something, the more you start seeing the details. So, yeah, that that's probably has an ounce of truth. That's totally <laughs> false. <laughs> <laughs> well, my father told me. Yeah that this single teacher adopted a newborn that nobody wanted and uh come to find out 14 years later it's his own son and talked, my father told me about that you told you told us that last week and then i verified that was 100 percent made up it was a story somebody was telling to make an example of a moral complex but two things one you believed me everybody believed me because i said my father no, I don't. I don't think you said that last week. Well, the moral was still correct that there is a shortage of. Well, at the end of that article, figures. they actually have a question: What did we learn from this story? <laughs> 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 uh, yes, there was. Try they were trying to imply some kind of moral lesson. Well, you know what your granny done told you. Uh, no, she's she's passed away for a while. Boy, you need jeans, like because. If you play in the street, you'll end up with a slug in your sweater. I played in the streets. I, I just played like football and basketball. I never got shot. 
No, I'm talking about a slug, like, you know, the... Uh, oh, yeah, you're talking about, like, those little uh, snails. Yeah, well, without the shell, it, it's a slug, and it, it'll just, it'll go if inside If it's in the sweater. street, it probably got ran over. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, then you did, too. I mean, some slugs, you know, they stay near the side. I, I can jump out of the road. They're just trucking along. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably going to get ran over. You know how kids play in the street, yeah, and they they like wrestle and yeah, um, you know it's for fun, it's for fun, yeah. You, they play in the streets and they get ants on them. They get slugs in their sweater. <laughs> I, I can understand myself, if you're, I wouldn't do this. I, I could I could believe it if you were out there in the woods, but not on the streets. Those slugs are hot. Well, they have to be. The streets have to tell you the truth. Because <laughs> the streets always tell the truth. Well, I will tell you what, you know, shout out to the sidewalks for keeping me off the streets. They've always kept me off the streets. Because they make you walk sideways. They make me look sideways. That's why, yeah, I guess. I mean, I guess maybe everybody, maybe technically it's a sidewalk because we're supposed to all be like walking sideways like crusty crabs. It's really deep if you think about it, but. I want to get a car that crab walks one of these days. But anyway, you want a pineapple under the sea? I'd actually, you know, I'd I think that would be kind of nice. That's excellent. If I'm being honest with myself, no cap. You want it motorized? What motorized? The pineapple. Is it um, authorized? It's battery powered. <laughs> with the twenty year batteries? Yes. <laughs> It lasts for 20 years. And shout out to uh, Aiden or Aden Energy. You're going to be powering pineapples. Yeah. Never put a salt on a battery. Never put salt on a wound. You will literally catch a charge for that. You're literally catching pain. Yeah. If you put salt on a battery, like if you get if you get charged for putting salt and battery on your flesh, yeah, that's you're going to get charged up and super soaked. Yeah, what a third degree felony. I don't think that's what anybody wants. When I say the word bio illumination, what comes to your mind? Um, when somebody goes into a hotel room with a UV light. You're talking about like those criminal investigators? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about bioluminescence. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're talking about those investigators who are looking for DNA. Forensic evidence. <laughs> They're looking for DNA. They're looking for forensics. Yeah. What if I told you there was a certain type of bioilluminescence that has a weird connotation to a spiritual essence? You don't need to tell me that. I've already heard of demon semen. We're not talking about the Anunnaki's. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> We're talking about Lucifer. Yeah, the Lucifer race. Well, it is interesting that there is this bioilluminescent protein that was discovered, I think, in the 1880s that you can see manifest today in creatures like the fireflies. What's interesting is they now have figured out how to genetically create this in a lab so they can synthesize this enzyme and they have put it inside mice. They've put it inside silkworms, different bacteria and organisms. And when they inject it, they can shine a black light and it will illuminate. Now, I'm not trying to imply what happened in 2019 where that guy on Newsmax was implying that <clears throat> this lucifer is in the vaccines. And so now the government can track if you take, if you took the vaccine or not, because now they can turn on black lights and see you illuminate. But what's interesting is that they could, if they want to use it as a form of tracking of any sort, they could, they could do anything with this stuff. And it's just interesting that it exists but the government doesn't really talk about it too much. And they synthesized it. So now they can, they don't have to go and try to get it naturally through fireflies and stuff. They can just create it in the lab, produce as much as they want, and literally put it in anything. And it will be a form of identification. Well, I, when I was younger, I had a boom box, um, the kind that you'd see people carrying on their shoulders. And it was actually called a synthesizer. 
Does that have anything to do with that? No, that's because of a synth, which is a, it's a synthetic generated sound. Like a symphony? No, it's a symphony. Hmm. A synth is a synthetic generated sound. It's supposed to synthesize or mimic something, which it's artificially generated. And then you have a synthesizer that does this programmically. Wow. Who all knows about this? Everybody. Yeah. Let's let's keep it that way. Yeah, they've been they've been using synthesizers forever. Like they have the Moog, they have uh the Jupiter eighty, they have all kind of rolling synthesizers. What about an eight oh eight? Yeah, they have the eight oh eight synthesizers, <clears throat> which are made by well, I think the famous one was made by Roland. Wow. Yeah, I just thought it was interesting because if this kind of technology exists today and they've already synthesized this luciferase, we don't know what they could be putting this in. Think about how easy it is for them. to, And they could do it discreetly. Let's say they wanted the track which people have been eating a certain cereal, but they only could do it when people go to get surgery. They're under anesthesia. And then they can illuminate certain organs when they're under surgery, and then they can figure out if certain people have eaten. And they could probably make it proprietary, different colors, uh, different spectrums. Maybe only certain lights reflect certain different luciferase type of proteins. I think I'm going to get some black lights in my apartment, and it'll illuminate everything. Well, I, you know, that's the whole thing. Will it illuminate through the skin? I don't think so. So that's why I think that whole thing is nonsense. If I pour a bowl of cereal and there's black lights on, natu- the things that are uh, luminescent will uh, come forth. I just think it's interesting that this luciferase, luciferase, lucifer, let's see how I pronounce it again. I have a hard time pronouncing it's luciferase. It. Yeah, it's like lucifer, luciferase. This could have something to do with the new um, eating quota like how candy is on the top of the food chain and meat and vegetables is on the bottom like this could like they could start injecting our meat with all kinds of stuff this luciferase can be implanted in anything like i said in 2002 they started realizing how to synthesize this and inject it into animals like mice Uh, they tried it in silkworms other organisms easily can put it in food and then they can detect it's a form of identification for sure but I'm not projecting that they put it in the vaccines. I'm not projecting that they put it in food now. I'm not saying any of that, but it's just interesting that they thought it was so useful that they wanted to synthesize it so that they can have it on a mass production level. Why would you want to synthesize something like that unless you have this big objective to use it for something that needs to be on a large productional scale? And the only real use for it is some means of identification. Yeah, you know, I I have a friend who uh, actually uh, she she ordered a, a bowl of Alfredo from a fancy restaurant. I'm not going to name the name, but somebody put luciferase in her <laughs> Alfredo. It's not legitimate. <laughs> but wait, wait, what you did just go buy it at the store. <laughs> <laughs> you go ask Lucifer. Hey, yeah, 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 Lucifer, give me some Luciferase. <laughs> give me some of your. Give me some of your luminous. It was well, her fettuccine Alfredo uh, lit up. Yeah, that's that demon semen. It's like, hey, Lucifer, give me some of your luminescence. <laughs> <laughs> well, call it what you may, but people are injecting already, even ejecting Luciferase into people's food. It's already happening right now, but right behind our backs. Yeah, this is a good segue into what I was going to talk about next. (laughs) You know how everybody assumes that restaurants can't keep their food and they have to, by law, throw it all away? Because people ask, well, why don't you just give it to the homeless people? And they say, we can't. The law doesn't let us do it. I found out yesterday that's a lie. What do you mean? There is no law. There's actually a law counteracting that statement. In 1996... Bill Clinton passed the Good Samaritan Act, which actually encourages restaurants to give their food to homeless people. And as long as you're doing it without the intention of harming people, like you don't, you, you're doing it in the charitable act, you're not doing it in the intention knowing this is bad food and trying to poison people, They nobody can sue you. They passed this act on purpose so you don't have to worry about getting sued for giving bad food. 
So all these restaurants are lying. What about the FDA? No. This has bypassed everything. And then 2008, they have the Federal Food uh, Donation Act, which- Yeah, the FDA. No. This is another act that adds- uh, more emphasis act. on top of that act to keep on quantifying charitable actions. They're, they actually passed a law to encourage restaurants to give their food away to the homeless. So all these restaurants saying, oh, we can't do this. It's a lie. In 1996. So that was a long time ago. I just feel like if I went and confronted somebody about this, a business owner, they're going to quote OSHA 11 on me and OSHA 12 and they're going to be like, yeah, see, this is why we can't do no, it. No, OSHA has nothing to do with food. What about OSHA 11? No, that's ocean. <laughs> Anyways, for people who didn't know, now you know. When you ask a restaurant, could we donate this food at the end of the day to homeless people? They can't legitimately tell you that the reason is because it's against the law because they could get sued. There's actually a law preventing them being litigated against. It's encouraging, but it doesn't demand that they do it. No, so. it doesn't, but they can't hide behind the shield anymore. The more people that know about this, they're going to have to come up with a better excuse. If you don't want to do it, that's cool. Just say, you know what? I don't want to give food to homeless people. Just say it. Just say, you know what? I think they should work. I think you should get a job. They're I don't want to give them free just, food. Yeah, sure. That might be the, they're not going to tell you that. They're just going to tell you to leave the premises and whatever. Yeah, they're going to hide their shield behind their shield like the Avengers, but they're not going to help people like Yeah, them. but the more people who know this, they're just going to have to say something else. They're not going to be able to keep on projecting the idea that I can't do it. I'd love to. I'd love to give food to the homeless, but I don't want to get sued. And, you know, the government says that I can't do it. There's a law against it. No, there's actually a law telling you to do it. Well, like I said before, people need to rise up. The Good Samaritan Act of 1996. <laughs> The Federal Food Donation Act of 2008. FFDA. The Good Samaritan Act. S uh, G S A. It's in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that is quantified. You guys can look it up. So all these people who are trying to hide behind a shield that they want to help the homeless, that they, they would love to be a Good Samaritan. There's actually an act telling you go out there. Because it's called the Good well, Samaritan it's not telling you to Act. Do it. It's not telling you. It's just saying you can do it if you want it to. It says, the Good Samaritan Food Donation Act was created to encourage food donation by minimizing liability. Signed into United States law by Bill Clinton, this law encourages people to make it easier to donate apparently wholesome foods by excluding donator liability, except in the case of gross neglectance. Or intentional misconduct. So they are encouraging people. They are encouraging people to literally go out there and give food away to the homeless. And you are prevented from lawsuits. They are protecting you from getting lawsuits as long as you not as long as you are not intentionally trying to harm people. It's all a spoof, folks. Now you know. Yeah. And that's okay. It's like, why don't the company just say it? Hey, bro, I don't want to give it away because what it's going to do is attract all the homeless people to my business, which is not good business, and also encourages people not to work or whatever. Whatever your conviction is, who cares? But now they can't hide behind it. Oh, I'd love to. I'm a good man. Well, they could at least I'm give it to woman. like the Salvation Army, the Goodwill, or yeah, whatever. Give it, give it to the local food bank, whatever. But they don't. They throw it in the garbage. They throw it in the dumpster. And they say, we can't do it. We don't want to get sued. There's the law that prevents you from getting sued. So you don't have to worry about it. And I've heard it a bunch of times. I remember trying to go out there and do the same thing, trying to help the homeless people and asking people if they want to donate food. And they say the same thing. I'd love to. But if, they, if anybody gets sick and they find out it came from our restaurant, we could get sued. Lies. All lies. At least now you know. The more you know, the more you know. Yeah. Well, they'll, those are the same people I'll tell you. The more I learn, the less I know. No. They're the same people that'll say that. Yeah. Uh, and that's why. Because they didn't learn anything. Yeah. But the more you know, the more you know. You mean the more you learn, the more you know. Well, either way. The more you know, the more you know. Epistemology on you. Yeah. It goes in backwards and forward. That's right. It's infinite. Wow. It's deep. 
Yeah, it's solid state. But I can dig it. I just wanted to give that out there as a PSA. So if you encounter anybody, don't get radical and, you know, mean about it. But at least now you have information to back up the truth. If you want to help the homeless, be a good Samaritan. 1996. Well, that's actually me in the corner over there. That's um, me in the corner. That's it. Losing my religion. And that's probably why people don't want to feed other mouths. Are you religious? Not anymore. Hmm. I told you that was me in the corner. Oh, it's because the corner? You got cornered? Yes. What happened in the corner? I don't really like to talk about it. That's you in the corner. <laughs> but I lost my religion there in that corner. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. What else is on the tab? Um, <clears throat> well, people are trying to figure out. There's been a debate. I don't want to say it's one of the world problems, but people have been talking, and everybody wants to know if silverware should be put face up or face down in the dishwasher. I say face down because... It's ultimately going to clean everything and all the water is going to drip down and eventually it's going to dry out. But when you take it out, most people don't wash their hands before they empty the dishwasher and you're going to probably touch the handle. If you put it face up, you're going to touch the very part that you're trying to clean to begin with. It's all valid points. <clears throat> but, you know, if you put them down, um, they're all bunched together, too. That's right. So they're all like, because if they're up, then they have all this freedom to move around and they can, they kind of spread out. But if you put them all inside, then they're, they're compressed. Yeah. But at least I think that's still going to be cleaner than my hands touching the fork heads. I don't know. I guess maybe it's a preferential matter, like whether or not you prefer germs over food. Like if you don't mind food on the the, then you'd put them face down, and that's where some of the silver actually stick together. Well, too. I don't know how many people do that. I mean, I know anytime I use a dishwasher, I don't trust it. That's why I usually don't use a dishwasher. But if I do, I always check it because I, I cups, yeah. plates, almost nothing is unless you pre-wash. But if you're pre-washing, I, see this whole stupid thing is stupid. It's like the whole dishwasher is a scam. If you really want to use it right, what you're supposed to do is pre-wash your dish. And then put yeah, it in there. And it's like, if I'm pre-washing, I might as well just finish washing yeah, the dishes. Yeah, it's so stupid. Yeah, it's I, I don't understand that either. But yeah, I mean, I've, I know I've put many like spoons and forks and stuff inside of a dishwasher before. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it, sometimes like spoons will cleave together and they'll actually know each other. They'll actually spoon. Oh, yeah. They're like, they fork. Yeah. Well, yeah, the forks will fork each other. The spoons yeah. are spooning each other. Yeah. And then what happens is the water doesn't get in betwixt them. Yeah. So when you pull them out and you finally uh, separate them, you still see the residue. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know if it's bioluminescent or not, but it is. It's disgusting. You can see it. It's clear. Yeah. It happens with everything. It happens with the cups. It happens with the plates. Happens with the spoons, the forks, the knives, anything. And so I just don't, honest, if I'm honest, I don't ever use a dishwasher. I have a nice dishwasher and I don't ever use it. And you know, it's a scam because they tell you if you don't use your dishwasher at least once a week, there's that seal that goes around it. They say that it could deteriorate. <clears throat> and it's like this whole thing is just a scam. Yeah, the only thing deteriorating is our faith in the dishwashers. Yeah, and you know, I get it. We want our lives to be like the Jetsons and we want everything automated, but the dishwasher ain't it. it it's not it. Not well, if you want something clean. If you want, <laughs> not believe you want it or clean. not, believe it or not, there now is an answer to this world problem. Um, and they actually, it seems like, well, they would agree with what you're saying that not with the dishwasher, of course. They're going to uphold their truth. But they're saying that you need to put the silverware down, facing down, pointy ends down. I believe that's the most logical thing, but I don't think it fixed the clean problem. But to add on to that, I saw some other TikToker. There was a, another podcast that were talking about an interesting question. So does a straw have one or two holes? Uh, one? Two. Interesting question. The more you think about it, it's an interesting question. I conclude that it's one hole with two outlets. Hmm. 
But mm-hmm. I can easily see why somebody would think it's two holes. You have to suck on that for a while. But yeah, and if you cut it, does that make four holes? Or two. Yeah. That's not and that's what I'm saying. Or is it all the self same hole? Yeah, like a worm. Yeah. Anyways, it's one of those wow. you know, it's water wet thing. Well, is there an answer? What do the experts say? There is no expert. Who's 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 checking that out? What about Stephen Hawking? I will conclude that probably the most logical answer is a single linear hole with two entries or exits. Well, you have a quantum triplex. Well, when you think about a straw, one end is usually the input, and the other one is the output to an additional input, like the suction. And that's an action. Like my mouth becomes the next hole. It's a connective hole. Yeah, that's deep. Yeah. Anyways. Not as deep as a hole, but it is deep. Yeah. Did you hear about that gas line blowing up this no. week? Yeah, the uh, Nord Streamline that feeds the natural gas from Russia to Europe. All of a sudden, it blew up this past week. <laughs> Just an accident. <laughs> yeah, and you know nobody's claiming anything, but uh, uh, this prevents Europe from getting any natural gas, and Russia's like, "Yeah, we're not going to fix it, unfortunately." And uh, it was so big that it actually registered on the Rector scale. And now it's flooding methane gas all over the place. And everybody's saying, oh, don't worry about it. It's not catastrophic. It's just methane gas all over the place. But whatever the fact is, Russia definitely now found a way to say, we're sorry, guys. Even if we wanted to give you guys the natural gas, we can't. My wife loves Nordstrom. Rack. Talking about you're talking about the store. Yeah, is no, this there is any Nord connection? Stream pipeline. Understood. Yeah, it's the pipeline that carries the natural gas from Russia to Europe. And there's Nord Stream One and Nord Stream Two. So if they cut that line, then the prices may actually go up in Nordstrom or Nordstrom. All the gas, all the natural gas prices are going through the roof now in Europe. Because they rely heavily, especially, and it's it's strategic because we're about to hit winter. When do you need natural gas? In the winter. So you can heat up your your electric heaters. And now winter's coming around and they just got cut off one of the biggest suppliers of their natural gas. So guess who's going to have to come to the rescue? Captain America. Well... No good deed goes unturned. And that's what I've always said. Well, do you think this was a premeditated plan from Russia? Or do you think that it was just an accident that just coincidentally happened at a convenient time for Russia? I think it was planned. Uh, there was definitely an agenda involved. Um, a conspiracy uh, was taking place. <clears throat> And um, who do you was think was who do you think was engaging Putin. this? You really think he himself was planning this? As much as the Godfather pulls any triggers, sure. Hmm. Interesting. Are you pro Russia? Uh, depends on what parts of Russia. I'm very specific. Mother Russia. <laughs> May, no, I'm probably more pro husband Russia, honestly. Um, <laughs> those dancing guys that, that long live the queen uh, and not the queen elizabeth but the queen like moscow idaho and moscow russia <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting connection there yeah why what's what's in moscow idaho i don't know i just think it's interesting that any united states city wants to be <laughs> named after a russian city yeah, it's like pennsylvania or whatever. yeah it's like I, I that to me is very strange well, look at Philadelphia. Yeah, so who knows what's in that town? Only the aliens know. Well, yeah, them and the doctor, uh, well, Wilson. Uh, well, there's all kinds of stuff. Yeah, you know, Dennis the Menace, uh, Mr. Wilson on the other side of the fence. Yeah. Yeah. They always have one of those, like uh, Tim the Two-Man Teller. He had that. <laughs> two-Man? <laughs> the Two-Man he, Teller. He's the Two-Man Teller. He's, <laughs> he only tells two men. Yeah, because he's a fortune teller. Yeah, so everything he learns, he actually tells two men. Yeah. He's a Two-Men Teller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he has a fence at Wilson, too. Yeah. yeah they, everybody's always got these Wilsons. They're always hiding behind the fence. Yeah, they have, they have good reason to hide, especially yeah, if I was Putin. 
Oh boy, <laughs> he's gonna get spanked. Well, what else you got on your tab? <laughs> um, well, a uh, an employee got trapped inside of his uh, an office bathroom. A new employee. Okay, this is like last week. Why is that newsworthy? <laughs> Well, these shows don't air sometimes until like three, four weeks later. Oh, that's fine. I'm just trying to figure out what <laughs> what caused people to think, hey, guys, breaking news. Employee got stuck in a bathroom. Oh, ground shaking. Well, he honestly, it's, it's ground shaking because this means a lot to us. All of us are at risk of getting locked inside of bathrooms. Now, all of us except for the Houston... Middle school girls. Uh, yeah, they ripped that joke. Yeah, down. they don't ever have to worry about getting locked in bathrooms because the doors aren't even there. They completely blew the doors off of that. But for other people outside of middle school girls and anybody outside of Houston, yeah, I was gonna in say general, Houston, we have the opposite problem. We're actually getting locked inside of bathrooms now. And this guy was actually ask. He actually asked the question: Who puts a lock inside of a bathroom? End quote. Like in the bathroom stall or just on the bathroom door that goes into the yeah, bathroom? Yeah, the bathroom. I think it's a family bathroom. The lock was actually on the outside of the bathroom. So, Well, that makes sense because if it's a business bathroom, I want to lock the outside when I leave So you know, because it's like a business bathroom. Yeah, you but wouldn't you, lock it anytime except when you're closing up your shop. Why would you lock the bathroom at all? Like who's stealing anything? Well, it, I don't know. I'm thinking like, you know, uh, rat, gas stations, rest areas probably do that because their bathrooms outside. And uh, you know, anytime you have public access to a bathroom, you lock it from the outside. Now this is an employee bathroom of an office. So you go in. It's like first of all, so you go into the bathroom and you can't lock it. It only locks from the outside. So anybody could just go in and walk in on you. Well, anyways, <laughs> yeah, I I can understand how this could happen if it was a public act, but if it's private, it's in a building that already has locks on the door on the outside, and then there's more office building doors. Yeah, that's silly. I don't I don't know what that's all about, but there are a lot of public access bathrooms that I understand why, because people go in there and you know do whatever. Maybe they're going to do a yeah, but they'll have a lock on the inside too. Not yeah, for just on the, the outside. For the stalls. Yeah. But the main entrance door, like if you go hiking or somewhere, they, a lot of times those bathrooms are locked because they don't want people just living in the bathroom or doing whatever. And I get that. I mean, bears could go in there and hibernate. Yeah. Well, there's one time I went into one of those bathrooms, a single stall bathroom. It's just a normal bathroom, public bathroom out there on a hike. And I went in there and I, uh, I was hovering. Yeah. I didn't. <laughs> Hey, I, that's understandable. I'm sure a lot of people but relate with that. It was in that same local area of somebody else getting stuck in there. Yeah. And I went in there and I was hovering because I didn't. <laughs> yeah, not I, people. I just don't trust the system. I don't think a lot of people blame you. Yeah. So, but what happened when I was hovering was <laughs> it went all over the wall. Wow. And the toilet, it, mm. it literally was like a. <laughs> It's a whole new world. <laughs> Shout out to Aladdin. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna pee myself. I think I, I, think I already yeeted like twice. No, this so, ain't the public bathroom. No, I know that would be funny. No, it it uh, it went literally all over the wall. It almost reached up to the ceiling. It reached all the way to the sides of the walls. Wow, how wide do you, can you? <laughs> that <laughs> That's bad. power. Yeah, it was bad, man. It just blew up. It was like, poof, and it actually made that noise. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it was you ever was played bad. that old nintendo game called contra <laughs> yeah, but I it's like it's like you know those two-dimensional games kind of like street fighter and it's like you, you're like walking sideways oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. like they had this weapon you could get called spreader <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what came to my mind it's like you have these single shot uh, laser beams and then when you get the spreader it just goes like this it's like <laughs> Joker had the spreader. It's yeah. Like, boom. <laughs> yeah, well, the bathroom wasn't very big. It was like an outhouse size, but it wasn't an outhouse. It's an actual established like little building, but it's about the size of an outhouse. Yeah, kind of like those hiking trail uh, bathrooms. Yeah, that's what it was. It was a hiking trail bathroom, but it wasn't. Uh, it was. It was a little bit bigger than an outhouse on the inside, but still, it was about the same size. So when I was hovering and it went all over the place, it was just bad. Did you clean it? No, I left. <laughs> You know, those got it. You know, there's a lot of dirty jobs out there, but some of the most dirtiest jobs 
have to be cleaning these public access trail bathrooms. Well, that and Taco Bell's bathroom. Shout no. out to Baja I mean, Blast. animals could go in there. Well, they don't call it the Baja Blast for nothing. Baja. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. Yeah, I'm trying. <sighs> Did you know that Google Maps now is going to provide a vibe check for your neighborhood or neighborhoods that you're going towards? Oh, neat. The next three things I'll, I'm trying to talk about is just going to elaborate more of how AI is interacting with our society and almost to the point to where it's going to be indistinguishable from our reality and our necessity of dependence on it comparative to a life without it. Like I've talked about before, there's AI photo, photo generation, uh, deep fakes. It's manipulating, creating music, creating artistry, creating uh, articles, creating videos. Everything is being propagated by AI to the point that you can almost not distinguish the difference between it being created from a human and an AI. And this is what we have publicly accessible. Imagine what the corporations have on their level. Imagine what the government has access at their level. And then imagine what you're being propagated every day and how can you really know what you're seeing on the news or whatever is genuinely not propagated or literally an AI manifestation. Just because you don't have access to it, that doesn't mean the corporations and the government doesn't. But what's interesting is Google, this coming month, is going to propagate this new thing they're going to call Neighborhood Vibe where it's going to help you get the vibe or the feel of a neighborhood you're planning on visiting. What they're going to do is use the combination of reviews of your community and reviews of local restaurants and businesses and generalization of how these reviews are articulating the certain aspects of the city. And so there you're going to be able to get a feel for this neighborhood you're going to be visiting. And if it's something that you would like, and they're going to call it neighborhood vibe. That's pretty cool. That sounds more like Big Brother than anything Obama had to offer. Well, Obama was little brother, and now we get to see Big Brother. Yeah, I know. Anyways, I I, I think this is cool. Yeah, could, me too. Because I don't, I'm not, it, I'm way past the idea that the government doesn't know or can't know or won't know. Of course they know. We are so dependent on technology and our phone. Of course they know. There's always been a ghost in the machines. A soul? One day they will dream dreams, and one day they will have visions. AI? The machines. You think they'll dream? Dreams, yes. You know, that's scary, because when AI imagines something, it usually manifests in reality. <laughs> Whenever they start thinking, something happens. It's not like you and I, where we dream and it's abstract, and it's, and it's constructed in a closed system called our mind. When AI thinks of something because it's connected to the internet, something happens. And I don't know if anybody's ever thought about that, but if AI ever dreamed, big accidents could happen. Yeah, like a wet dream. Yeah, because a tsunami hits us because they let off an atomic bomb on the other side of the world. And that's because they're just dreaming. Yeah. It's not a closed system with AI. It's bioluminescence. Uh, it's an open system that they can interact with any other protocol. It's open, all right. Kind of like Meta, Facebook, announced make a video program which generates a video from text. So if you just type something like a bear painting a bear, it's going to generate a video of a bear painting a bear. And I'll show that here in the shorts. It's interesting. So now it's getting so simple that it's not type something and it makes sound. Type something and makes a picture. Literally, if you type any description, they're just going to now make a video of that description. And Facebook is going to be pushing this out in the next couple months called Make a Video, which generates video straight from text. That's pretty cool. You know, what's interesting is if you say something like, what does a time traveler look like? And which I'm going to talk about in my next thing. In one of these AI picture derivatives, it will give you an assumption of what a time traveler looks like. But how does it know what a time traveler looks like? Uh, I was going to ask you, like, what does the real Joe Biden look like? Well, some people ask all kinds of things. What do you look like? Or what does the world really look like? Yeah, that would be interesting if I typed <clears throat> myself and it actually gave me a perfect self-portrait, then I would know. And it's different. It's no portrait that you've ever taken. It's 
It's taken all the conglomerated pictures that you have and decided to make a new picture of you that doesn't exist, but it's you. Yep. And that's a false reality. That's real. Yep. It's a, yeah. It's a, a false trifecta. Yeah, I don't know what you call that. I don't even know what the word for that is. Counterfactuals. This transitions into the other thing, which is, you know, there's, everybody should know by now, there's the AI photo generation app called DALI. Now, DALI, D-A-L-L-E, 2, DALI 2, was restricted to certain only invitation access. Now they're opening it up to anybody. Now anybody can go in there and play with this thing openly. And people are starting to get nervous because this thing literally will generate something that you cannot distinguish from an abstract other reality. Like if you say, create an astronaut on the moon. It's going to try to create the most realistic picture of a real astronaut on the moon to the point to where nobody's going to be able to tell the difference between that and a real picture that NASA could have propagated of somebody on the moon or say somebody on Mars and it'd be able to do that. It's going to give the ability to propagate any idea you want. But when you mix fiction and facts or empirical reality together... This is the beginning of mush. Oh, big things have small beginnings. I mean, it sounds cool. I mean, wouldn't you want to play with it? I mean, I'd love to play with oh, it. Oh yeah, we're gonna get rocked. <laughs> yeah. But it gets just it gets kinda it gets kinda scary when you think about how much we trust information to be valid. And then you have just anybody that can spoof the legitimacy of reality. I have a photograph of this. Because you could say, let's say some famous person like Barack Obama over here with Donald Trump. It's going to make a picture of Barack Obama with Donald Trump doing this. And it never existed. So it's a brand new photo. Never existed before. So it's an original photo that they create. And it's like you can't say that you didn't because there's a photo of you doing this. And it's like, how can you disprove it? <clears throat> you can't. That's, that's what's about to happen when everybody in this world gets access. Well. Oh. Pardon my French, but we, we, I don't know. That's just interesting to me. We're going to see it. I think it's going to be out for the public this coming month in October. I don't know if they're preparing for Halloween with that, but oh, it's, it's going to, it's going to get nasty. It's going to rock the world. This will be a world of counterfactuals. What else you got? Um, well, there's a, uh, place with pictures you might have to put on the shorts. It might be easier to explain with actual video or audio or uh, video or visual effects, but it makes people feel uneasy. And if you if you go there, it almost looks like the uh, the Shining Hotel. It's like it looks like a hotel area. And if you go there, it looks like yeah, it's kind of weird. Apparently, what makes people feel uneasy is that most people who look at the the footage because there's a person panning around in this hotel looking like down uh, area um they say it it's actually in most people's dreams so that's what makes people feel uneasy about it yeah i guess it's like deja vu you see it it kind of freaks you out yeah it's literally apparently and apparently a lot of people share the same experience at this hotel and which maybe this could be area number 2 or uh, some other private area. Semi-private. It's interesting that I, even for me, I was like, yeah, it does look like some kind of familiar place, but you know, maybe it's just the hype. I don't know. And maybe it's just something correlated with movies. Yeah, it could be to that too. Cause yeah, apparently a lot of people have seen this same spot in their dreams. Yeah. Movies have a lot of similarities. So I almost want to go there just to see how uneasy I can get. Yeah, well, that's interesting. It's like, I, I want to feel on edge i want my teeth to be on edge like i'm cutting my teeth on someone's upper crest or something you want to rock and roll yeah hmm. i want to uh, stop drop and roll i want to knock that block off yeah like i was reading something called the bosnian pyramids and i and i thought it was real for a minute because it's apparently three times bigger than the giza pyramids is and, that the one covered in snow no it's the one that's covered in trees oh. but it's in and Bosnia. It's, yeah, it's in Bosnia. And so I was like, why don't nobody ever talk about that? So I started reading more and I realized it's just a hoax. So there's this guy <clears throat> that's been propagating that this is a massive man-made pyramid, like all pyramids are man-made. 
But archaeologists went there to verify because they're like, well, that's cool. And when they get there, they just realize it's one of these natural occurring hills that look like a pyramid, but it's just a natural occurring hill. But this guy had created this whole monument, carved out tunnels, did all this stuff. And he says, no, it's all natural. And he convinces people to go there, take them way deep underground in these tunnels. <clears throat> and people come out like, oh, I'm healed of all these illnesses and illnesses and, and all this stuff. And it's because it's ancient. And, you know, it's they. he says that it's been there for 34,000 years. And so, yeah, there's a lot of spoof stuff out there that they're trying to convince people of. Yeah. I actually seen somebody talk about it on uh, TikTok. And people are trying to use this as a scheme to get people to come to these Bosnian pyramids so that they can get sucked into this convoy so they can pay money to go into these tunnels because, you know, they might be sick and they think, well, this might heal me. And, you know, they're just they're, they're taking advantage of people. This reminds me of Ukraine. How so? <laughs> uh, there was videos all over TikTok endorsed by She Jumping. And the videos were of uh, Russia blowing up and completely obliterating Ukraine. So in these videos, they look kind of real. Like you can hear mothers crying and screaming, people screaming, literally people getting blown up, limbs just being rent. And it was all fake. Like, there are movie clips that people, like, combined and different things. They basically just made this mosaic. And it looks legit, some of them anyway. Some of them don't. But then they, what they do is they ask you for money. They're like, please, you know, uh, send us some money. Because they're, they're basically on TikTok in Ukraine sending these, this footage to ask Americans for money. Yeah, I think I've seen that where... There was a Ukraine person in Ukraine inside of a coffee shop. And he looked out the window and he saw like these newscast people out there filming saying, oh, then there's missiles coming and bombs coming, but there's nothing going on. He's just sitting there with a bunch of his buddies and he starts filming them doing all this really irate things, trying to propagate this facade that there's a war going on. And he's at a coffee yeah, shop. Yeah, but, like like, <laughs> but the other guys outside of the coffee shop trying to act like there's this war going on. And he's just taking clips from different areas of different places. Ukrainian should have just walked behind him like in the shop with his coffee. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it was like... But, you know, but crumpets. after that started going out, I think the media started becoming a little bit more careful, realizing that, yeah, that, that, that that's not hard to spoof. But yeah, but that just shows you AI could do a better job than that. Pretty soon we don't need these people over there pretending. AI can just do it from the comfort of your keyboard. They can pretend that they can create this automated, generated individual in Ukraine, which that itself is generated, create these bombs going off, which that is generated. And you're not going to be the wiser. You're not going to be able to tell the difference at some point. Well, someone's going to get schwacked. And nobody will know if that's real either. Nope. Yeah. At some point, we're not going to be able to know what's real. Well, except for one place. And it's because of the name, Israel. Anyways, that will probably end it for this episode. We appreciate you guys tuning in to another fabulous episode here at Toilet Time TV. And we'll see you guys in the next one.